Good evening, my dear friends. Um, this is uh, Reverend James Masharia, and I'm very happy to welcome you to our evening devotion. Uh, this evening, I'm going to be dwelling on the topic of rebelliousness in our children. But before I do that, I want to also draw your attention to maybe two families in the Bible. Uh, do you know that God has such a wonderful plan for our families? And in fact, uh, according to in the book of Genesis, before God went to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he was in the company of Abraham. And he started discussion among themselves. There were three men. God came and manifested as three men who visited Abraham. And what happened is that they started a conversation and they said, shall I hide what I'm about to do to Abraham? Seeing that he is going to teach his children the fear of the Lord. Shall I hide? He was about to do something. He was about to destroy the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, but he felt obligated to his friend because of the fact that Abraham would teach his children the fear of the Lord. And therefore, this tells us that God takes it very seriously and very deeply in his plans when we as parents uh, focus on teaching our children the fear of the Lord. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord belongs to those who fear him. And one way of showing fear to God as parents is to bring our children in that knowledge of God. Uh, let me also uh, bring you to another attention concerning the family of Samuel. Samuel was such a dynamic prophet. He was chosen by God even before he was born again. The mother made a vow that God, if you give me a baby boy, I will uh, commit, devote him. I will bring him to the house. He will be a Nazarene the rest of his life. And so Samuel was chosen by God even before he was born. But as much as he was one of the greatest prophets in the Bible, he stood before the servant of God, David. He's the one who anointed David. Who You know, David is, Jesus Christ is called the son of David. And Samuel, the prophet, one of the greatest, who walked before the anointed one of God, King David. He failed. He, he, he had a, a flop in his life as a family man because, you see, as much as he was a judge of Israel, he was a prophet of a nation. He anointed the great one, King David. But when it came to retirement, he brought his own sons to the elders of Israel so that they can be given different duties. But the elders of Israel said to Samuel, they said, you know, Samuel, we know you are a man of God. We know you are a prophet of God. But your sons are not like you. And so the sons of Samuel were rejected by the elders of Israel. As much as Samuel was a prophet, he did not make a very good role model in his own family. He wasn't a very good role model to his children. Because when it came to now taking over leadership, the elders rejected those children. And in my devotion this beautiful evening, dear viewers, I just want to draw our attention to uh, this man called Jacob. If you can open your Bibles in the book of Genesis, chapter 33 and verse 13, we see Jacob uh, medi mediating, or rather he was trying to advocate for his children because his brother Esau was encouraging him to go, to walk with him, to go with the speed of Esau. But in verse 13, Maybe you can bring, uh, start reading from verse 12. Then Esau said, let us be on our way. I will accompany you. But Jacob said to him, my Lord knows that the children are tender and that I must care for the heirs and the cows that are nursing their young. If they are driven hard, just one day all the animals will die. So let me, let my Lord go ahead of us, of his servants, while I move slowly at the pace of the droves before me and that of the children. And I will come to you, to my Lord in Seir. 
So Jacob uh, directed Esau, his brother, he said, please, let me not go with you. Your speed is very hard. You drive, you go very hard. And I have young ones with me. He said, if I drive them very hard like you, Esau, they will one day die. So let me go slowly with the pace of the children. Let me take time until I come to my Lord in Seir. Let me go with the pace of the children. And in this, there's a lot of gravity in the statement of this father. He said, um, if I go very hard with them, they will die. And sometimes we, we look at our children and all we want is for them to perform very well academically. We want them to get their A's and all that, B minus, maybe B plus. We put a lot of pressure. We are ever absent. With, we are never there at home. Many parents, they, they are able to provide, but they, their presence is absent. They are never home. Maybe the house helps, maybe the, 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 the media influence. And many of the parents don't realize that their children have already reached adolescence. Their children are already going through a lot of uh, peer pressure and changes in, the, in, in, in this community. The pressure, the, the, the challenges we faced when we were young in the 70s are totally different. The dynamics have really gone. We are now digital. The world is moving very fast and children are being exposed to a lot of stuff, even on the media. Innocent cartoons uh, have already hidden agendas. Uh, even uh, programs for children, uh, if you have what we call Nicolodio, that's one of the programs that the children watch. They love it very much. But you find that there is also the, the gayism uh, being introduced there, LGBTQ. And sometimes it, it's only when you spend time with the children, when you sit down with them and you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, that's when you realize the challenges that these children are facing. So um, this evening, I just want to challenge you as a parent, as a father, as a mother, that you be there, be a role model, and teach these children the fear of God because these are our heritage, and God has trusted you with this treasure of your children so that one day you are going to bring them home as citizens of heaven, servants of God, men and women who will serve him because the foundation was laid properly by the parents. And may the, the secret of the Lord be with you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for entrusting us <clears throat> as you are servants that we may serve you, Lord, not only in Jerusalem, but Judea and Jericho, but we begin in Jerusalem where our children are. We, we begin at home. So help us, like Jacob, to have that concern that we may walk at the pace of the children. Help us, oh God, anoint us and equip us that we may know how to deal with our children, even their adolescents, even as they grow to become young youth, even in university, that our children will go with us all the way until you finish the good work you began in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.